afternoon, everybody. My name is Phil Brown. Today, I'm going to go over how to design a barrel nut inside of Fusion 360. We're going to use a couple of techniques, but this is just going to be a real quick tutorial on how you could get things. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen. As you can see, I already have Fusion 360 opened up. First thing we always want to do is we want to go ahead and save our file. So let's go ahead and save our barrel nut here. And let's dive right in. So as you can see here up at my toolbar, we're in the solids menu. We're gonna go ahead and start by creating our sketch and picking our view. I don't concern myself too much about what axis I'm drawing around, just that I'm drawing on one of the planes of the axis. So what I like to do is think about a barrel nut from a side view to start. And it might be as simple as, let's go ahead and make a couple of rectangles here to very generically get our shape down. So I am going to keep this very basic. We're going to go ahead and revolve that shape. So as you can see by using revolve, it's going to go ahead and select that profile. We pick our axis and we've now spun that profile already into what would be a bushing at this. But now because of our timeline at the bottom of the screen, we have that ability to go back and make it more or less complex as needed. So in this case, using a second rectangle, you can go ahead and create the shoulder for our threads. So as you can see, when I add that rectangle and I hit finish, nothing happens, but I can edit now that revolve. And with editing that revolve, I can remove the area where we want to apply our threads. So now we can see that we have a nice little step going inside there from our lower profile to our upper profile. That being said, we can create those threads very quickly just by selecting our thread tool now. We're going to go ahead and pick our surface. We're going to go and change this out because we actually want inch and a quarter. We want inch and a quarter by 18. And that's going to be fine thread for our actual part. We're going to hit OK. So as some of you may see, our threads are dramatically smaller than our actual barrel nut. And the reason for that is, is we've never constrained or dimensioned anything out to start. So again, we could always go back to our sketch. It's nice to leave your dimensioning till the end, but we're going to go ahead and sketch our dimension from center where we've rotated around to the outer part of our sketch profile. And I'm going to make ours 1.35, and I'm going to divide that by two because we're measuring radially. And now the same thing would apply is I can add my other dimensions or because nothing is fully constrained when it comes to the other profiles, can actually drag this stuff around a little bit. So let's go ahead and create our total length here. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that total length line. And we would like that to be somewhere around two inches. So let's go ahead and type in two. And now you're seeing things move around because again, we have not fully constrained anything yet. So I still have full freedom to go left and right. But if I try to go up and down, notice how it's only that line moving. If you're looking at your Fusion 360 and following along, I have my visual style set a little different. So if you go ahead and go into your environment, I will change back to Photo Booth. And you can see that with the white background, as soon as those lines turn black, they are fully constrained. So now if I want this corner and my origin to be aligned, I could actually say horizontal vertical, pick my point, pick my center line. And as you can see, it snapped down because that was the closer distance. You could go ahead and undo this, or you could push Control Z. And let's scoot it over to the left a little bit and retry that action, right? So a horizontal vertical that point over my origin, and it snapped over. Again, we're going to go ahead and pull back that pocket for our threads. And then how deep we want our threads is up to you guys when you get your final specs. But let's just go ahead and make ours a half inch to start. And then lastly, our center bore diameter, once again, we need to know the distance from our inner edge to the center point. And then we're just gonna make this one inch divide by two or a half inch through hole. And again, we'll zoom in here a little bit and just slide this out. So once I hit finish sketch, you're going to notice my entire profile has changed. And now I have my threads on the end. I actually have a nice little step in there. And if I go and measure using the inspect tool, I could go ahead and pull that inside diameter. You see that's one inch. If I go ahead and measure my thread diameter, I'm also going to get my minor diameter for my threads based on when we were to turn these and cut these on a lathe. 
So now that we actually have our thread, our length, our OD, is now we can go in and we can actually generate our flats in order to be able to put a armor's wrench on this to tighten it down. So again, there's a lot of different ways here. I'm going to keep it simple because I drew my part from a side view. Let's go ahead and go back and edit that sketch. We can now add in an additional rectangle anywhere that we kind of want to start that flat. So in my case, I would like my flat start in a half inch. And then I would also like that flat maybe to be a half inch. So I can actually reference a dimension by clicking that dimension. And you're going to now see it references dimension six. And I can hit enter. Another thing I might want to do is how far from center. So if we're going to use a metric wrench or a standard wrench, in this case, knowing that we can use a metric wrench, let's start by doing maybe a 30 millimeter divide by two. Again, because we could do the math and utilize increments of measure, automatically that is now snapped and converted to inch measurements. So again, we're going to say finish sketch. Notice how my sketch has disappeared. You can always turn this on up here in the sketch menu. Let's go ahead and turn on that actual sketch. And now we can go in and we can actually extrude that profile that we created. We're going to go ahead and say symmetrical. And when you pull one, it'll pull the other automatically. And we have that first flat now created to where I'm going to turn off my sketch. And as you can see, that first flat has been created. From here, we can go in and we can do a pattern. And don't worry about this if you click the rectangle pattern, because I can always change the pattern inside the menu. So we're actually going to say circular. Our object type is going to be a feature, because down in our feature tree, or as we call it a design history, I can pull that full extrude in one shot. I can grab my center axis. And then I can tell it I want to make this six times around. So as you can see, as soon as I hit OK, this now made me six nice little flats all the way around my part. Be able to utilize for my wrench when tightening down this barrel nut. Some other things that we can do here now is now that we've got that, if I wanted to, I could actually slide my timeline back and I can create some angles on this. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the draft tool. I'm going to keep the bottom flat, but I would like to angle my outer two edges, and maybe we'll open this up by about 30 degrees. And then the next thing I'm going to do is for manufacturing purposes, maybe we add a couple very small 30 thou fillets in the bottom of our actual flats. So again, as if I move our timeline forward, you're going to notice that that pattern's still only recognizing the extrude. Again, we can right click, edit our circular pattern, and the objects we're patterning, we can actually add to what we're doing by holding control and picking that draft and fill it. Again, when we release and hit OK, you'll notice that pattern now goes all the way around nice and clean. So that being said, if we wanted to get a little more fancy detail going on inside of our barrel nut, a few other things we can do is you could come back down and create a new sketch. Maybe we're going to sketch on a face of our part, not a plane. But notice how I'm not having to create a plane. It's auto-generated. But now I'm going to do a line. And we're going to go and do a construction line. The reason for that is, is I'm just going to very quickly find center. Next, we can add a circle, turning off construction. The hotkey is X there. But let's say we just want to do some very nice quarter-inch holes. So you can enter the dimension as you go, or you can hit D, the hotkey for dimension, or utilize dimension in the tool. So now we have our first hole here. Again, I'm going to use extrude or E on my keyboard. We're just going to bring that hole all the way down. And now let's give that a nice little fillet around the outside or a chamfer. I'm going to go ahead and just give this guy a 50 thou chamfer. And now you can see again, we repeat the process, right? So if I come down here where my sketch, my extrude, and my 
chamfer is. I'm going to drag that forward. And as you notice, I can't drag it forward because of the way the pattern is. But another thing I can do is I can create a new pattern. And again, we select those features and what we've done. We select our center axis and the number of times. So in this case, we went ahead and got an error because of our pattern, which is not a big deal. We can go ahead and see why that error was. Or in this case, the whole reason we couldn't move these features ahead of the pattern is because we couldn't create the sketch without that first flat being created. So in this case, let's go ahead and take our timeline. I've highlighted them holding Control or Shift and then Delete. And then we can recreate that sketch on our very first flat. So this is where the order in which you do stuff is very key. And the key element is, is that first feature was created and then pattern. And if you're ever confused about this, I went ahead and undid that with a control C, is if I just take my actual marker here and put it in front of the pattern, you'd see that was our very first feature. So that very, very first feature I can now sketch on and repeat exactly what I did. So we're gonna go ahead and create a line. I'm going to say construction. Maybe this time I go midpoint to midpoint vertically versus kitty corner. Again, we're going to create that circle. I'm going to turn off the uh, construction line. And let's make this three eights this time. So let's go ahead and go three divided by eight and let the software do the math for us. Again, we're going to do an extrude, which I'm pushing E, creating that hole into my part. And then lastly, let's go in and add our chamfer to that edge. Again, depending on how big of a chamfer we want, we might have to slow this down a little bit to like a 0.25, just because we don't want it. That look might not look as to what we want if we make this too big. Another thing we can do is if we get way too big with it, it does crash our model. So it is kind of thinking ahead of us. Again, maybe about 30 might be perfect. So now that we went ahead and created that all on that very first flat that we initiated. Again, we move our slide ruler forward. I'm going to go ahead and edit that pattern. And then again, we could just add in additional objects, holding control and selecting them and hitting OK. So again, now we have a nice little lightweight pattern around that barrel nut. Um, again, getting into this a little further, we can utilize things like chamfers all over our part. Maybe we need a little bit of a chamfer here just to break the edges. So we'll make a nice small little 10 thou edge break there. Maybe we actually do a fillet on the outside. Again, we can add these features in one at a time, or you can add multiple in. It's just a matter of using control, or in this case, I can actually say, I don't want both of those the same size. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign, grab the back edge, and then make the back edge maybe a much bigger kind of shape and profile. So as you can see here, I have a 50 thou radius in the rear and a 25 thou radius in the front. That being said, that kind of concludes a very quick tutorial on a different way of thinking when designing your parts. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for the barrel nut. Don't forget to like, follow. We will be releasing more content in the coming weeks.